Secretary Bresch for roll call. President Wassa. President. President Wassa. President. President Singh. President Singh.
Senator Soldata um, are collaborating. Uh, he came up with a whiteboard policy uh, for getting whiteboards to the engineering lounge, which is a great idea to use engineers to love writing equations and stuff on whiteboards and not pass around notebooks. And also he's coming out of the uh, by I have an engineering board idea. So right now, Engineering College has a joint engineering council, but it's very inactive and you no know, one really shows up, or the student boards within the Engineering College don't really collaborate with each other. They don't really know exactly what the other boards are doing. Like for example, I'm in Computer and Electrical Engineering, so I usually stick around that crowd and that's not really a true way to advocate for that engineering college and try to hold their problems. So I'm trying to redefine or this band to create a new org entity for the joint engineering council. And depending on I got information from an advisor who advises the joint engineering council exactly like Adams. And I'll also talk to you, Greg Schultz, who is the manager of engineering student programs. And I plan on working with them over the winter break on the logistics of it and how it can be done to make it so it will stay active and not wither away after a year or two. So everyone can collaborate better with the engineering college and present issues that maybe I can take from that and present to the Senate. Thank you. Senator LaVorce. Um, Senator Wilson and I are working on an organizing event for hopefully before the first hearing in January, but if not, it'll definitely be before the second. We've kind of noticed both being on the finance committee that people are having trouble either requesting money or figuring out what to do or if they don't know the right rules, so we're going to try and make that a little bit easier for them. Um, and I think it's kind of a good thing since we're at large, so all organizations across campus can benefit. And I think we're going to create kind of a little packet for when people come into the office, that way if they have a question that all their answers are just given to them if they've done so in the office and doesn't really know what to do. Thank you. So I'll share one more thing. Um, there's an IEEE convention coming up in April 9th, and I talked to the president of IEEE, and I was wondering if the uh, co-lab director, maybe the marketing director, could help with that with uh, getting more sponsors for it and marketing or outreaching. Because as of now, like, we're the only sponsors for them now. And in the previous, they had like 10 to 15 sponsors. They say they're not really looking for sponsors until like january -ish. So that'd be like a good time. Like they already have a website built. Like we're listed as their sponsor. I already handed over the vector image files for printing and all that. And uh, I could just send you to the information of the guy who's collabed with her, uh, putting it all together. His name's Taylor Barto, uh, and he's willing to work with you guys if you guys are willing to. I don't know if it's under your job description, but yeah. So, so. Any other announcements? Senator McCarthy? Um, so. Some of you might know, um, I report for the Cauldron. Um, so one of my assignments today, where was a group of students um, that met with the president to just talk about wage issues and tuition issues. Um, Dr. Yorbo wanted me to make the announcement, because um, he was there as well, like the CFO, the president, and Dr. Yorbo. Evidently, um, the office of community faculty senate yesterday, that internships are going to be, um, if there's not substantial in classroom time, um, Internships are going to not, you are going to have to pay tuition um, to take, to do an internship. And it can, it can count, not for credit, but you can get it on your transcript through the Treasury Services. So if you have like, your internship requirement, it will fulfill the requirement and it will be listed on your um, transcript. So that was uh, kind of a report back in that meeting. So, and if you went to back to the Senate, maybe the executive board can talk more to that. But it sounds like um, SGA's initiative um, is now going to be CSU policies. Good system. Senator Jacob. Um, I'm going to say it's for the students to be doing our PG fundraiser tomorrow at um, 5 to 9 p.m. The tickets are $15 with student ID, and Senator Bajar actually has them with her. So it's a great cause. I think you guys have come and show support. The um, dinner will be served, and there's going to be a fabulous keynote speaker. So we encourage you all to be there tomorrow. Uh, if I could add, it's going to be 30 
doll at the door, and if you buy today, it's a few. Any other announcements? Thank you for that. Uh, Director Jack Baskin. I'm not sure if uh, Speaker Hall mentioned, but we would like to get together and take one photo, just a group photo of the uh, Senate at the end of this meeting. So if we could do that, that would be lovely. So we can stick around for an extra five. Thank you for that. Any other announcements? I just want to reiterate one more time. Uh, so the police department with the emergency management drill, that's December 8th at 2.30 to 4.30. They are in need of volunteers. I understand this is during finals week, uh, but this is a good way for us to uh, get involved with the police department. If you want to get involved or have any questions, please email myself or Senator Sophie. And do your options. Post them and log them for this week. I know you guys have been there, but just please uh, make sure you guys have them on record. Uh, so if there's not any other announcements, Senator Keating? I just have a quick question. Will you be required to go home salaries for next week? No. Right. Starting the week we get back is the next step you have to do those. <coughs> any other announcements? Okay, can someone please entertain a motion to ratify the meeting minutes from the November 20th, 2015 meeting? Senator Ortensio? I move to ratify the November 20th, 20th uh, meeting minutes. Is there a second, Senator Walsh? Yes, second. Motion on the floor is to ratify the November 20, 2015 meeting minutes. Uh, any discussion on the matter? President Lawson? Did everybody read the meeting minutes? Yes. Yeah. Awesome, thanks, guys. Any other discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, the motion comes. <laughs> okay, um, first we have. A student affairs update. Um, All right, I just have a brief thing to go over with you all. Um, just recently, the Board of Trustees passed what is called the exec or Expressive Activity Policy. So in the past, if there was any type of <coughs> expression that took place on campus, there was usually a freedom of expression place on campus that was out on the courtyard, had to be reserved, and there was kind of some parameters around it. Um, now, basically, the university as a whole can be used for the freedom of expression if needed. Um, the purpose of the policy is to promote the free exchange of ideas. Um, so safe and effective operation of the university still must be able to happen. Um, it allows the use of all general access areas of the university for the purpose of speaking, distributing literature, displaying signage without prior notice. And this is for groups smaller than 100. If there are more than 100 people that are hoping to express something, um, it requires five working days, and that um, involves notice of the police department just so that they can be aware um, and be at the demonstration if needed. And the main thing is it prohibits any activities that take place that disrupt university business. So for example, I think it was a couple weeks ago, there was a group going throughout campus, um, they were yelling some things, which is fine, but then they went to the administration center and they had a blow horn. You know, that, there's a lot of work that takes place over there. People are on phone calls, so that's disruptive. The police asked them not to use the blow horn, and it was stopped. So just to adhere to university officials, um, but this new policy I can send out as a document to you all, so you can read through it and be familiar with it. But just to let everybody know um, that the whole university is able to be utilized, but there's just a few perimeters, and university uh, business as usual needs to be able to take place. Does that make sense? First of all, yeah. is being in class with university business? Yes. yes. What was the idea behind moving it from like a specific venue to a whole university? I think it was legislation that was brought down. Um, something happened at Ohio University where there was actual, it was brought from all state institutions needed to adhere to a different policy. Because it's a state public university, so we should be able to have just an assigned space for the university to be utilized. Any other questions for Advisor Johnson? Uh, one other thing, I know next week is finals, and I know this time of year people get tired, people get run down, make sure that you're taking care of yourselves, um, and also keeping monitor on your close friends. I know a lot of people get stressed this time of year with the holidays. Um, I serve in, as the Dean on Call in capacity as part of the Department of Student Life, and during this time of year we receive a lot of phone calls where people just kind of need someone to talk to or need a little bit of additional assistance. So just make sure that you're going to pulse on your friends and those that are around you 
Um, and if you guys need any type of assistance, you can contact us in the Department of Student Life. We have counseling services here on campus. But keep yourself healthy. Good luck at finals. Jack Bauman, right? For, uh, yep. Okay. Coming to talk to you guys about can construction. And I'll leave it at that first. Well, thank you all. Thank you. So can construction will be uh, my turn project with the architect's office. Um, he's going to explain it. Um, it's a really cool project that will benefit CSU Women's Food Pantry. Um, and he'll explain that portion. But I would like for a lot of people to be involved in this because um, it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of people because um, there's a lot of camp food here. So, thanks. So, thanks everybody. My name is Jack Bowman. I'm with the facilities department here on campus. Um, I'm an architect and I've been with CSU since 2011. Um, so, the facilities architect safety and technology FAST, our department, um, we're doing two events this year one in the fall, one in the spring. Uh, <coughs> just to give back programs. And the spring event is construction, which in front of you, if you don't have one, maybe share with your neighbor. If not, I have an electronic version of my emails here at the bottom. Um, Joanna Brown's here from our office as well. Her and I are, are partnered on this uh, initiative, along with um, Randy. So basically, construction, what that is, is we buy uh, multiple thousands of cans and develop a sculpture out of cans based on a theme. Um, it's a national competition. It's a nonprofit organization. Um, the Cleveland American Institute of Architects chapter puts it on every year. Um, it's usually in B for Play Small. Um, so that's part of the, let's say, the national um, event. But we wanted to put a spin on it and uh, tying in with the Lift Up Bikes uh, food pantry um, because they're kicking that food pantry off this year. Uh, we met with Jillian in their office. And um, so what we discussed was we could actually buy the canned foods that would do, we would do a CSU themed sculpture. Um, and usually it's anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 cans. We would buy them through the Lift, Lift Up Bikes program at a discounted rate um, from the Cleveland Food Bank. We would construct the sculpture at Featured Place in April. It would be on display with CSU, obviously, as the, the marquee for who did the display. Um, but then CSU Food Bank, we would get back all of those cans that we bought for the salt. So it wouldn't go into the main bank um, of food, but we'd come back here to supplement um, our community. So the thought was that we need all of your help, or if you guys are interested in doing this, um, we would do the main construction off-site. Um, but we would like to bring it back on campus and do it in a public space, maybe the student center here, and have it on display for the rest of the semester after it leaves Speechwood. So we would actually take it down and reconstruct it here. It does take a lot of effort. Um, obviously, facilities, we have trucks, we have manpower to, to move it to and from. But um, I think it's a, I've participated in this in a couple previous years, and it's a really good program. Um, it's great team building, um, but also it's, it's a pretty interesting uh, event. So you can see a, a well-rounded set of sculptures publicly, but then coming back here, I think it raises awareness of our need here on campus as well. So, Does anyone have any questions? <coughs> so do we help create the sculpture with like the architect's like input, or do you guys create it and it's just from our support? Kind of I'm just a little confusing. That. Well, right now, we're, we're kind of up in the air. Um, Internally, we're you know obviously thinking something CSU related, so ideas would also help. Um, obviously, there are restrictions of what you can do with the cans, um, but really, uh, what we're looking at is we're looking at reaching out to the, the different colleges, um, getting some funding from the different colleges, maybe fifty to hundred dollars a college. With that money, we could buy the cans at a discounted rate, which is usually about thirty percent less through the food bank here. Um, but really, it's a, a matter of creativity and, and manpower is what we're looking for. So if anyone here is interested in building the, the sculpture at Beachwood Place, you're more than welcome to help. Um, but we also thought it would be a good team building exercise here on campus. Um, and so when Jack and Juana came up to get this idea, I thought that what better way to try to help um, ask university officials for funding than with the senators who represent those 
I think that this is probably one of the best utilization of senators in administration that probably has ever happened. Um, it's a lot easier for an administrator to another administrator to say no for funding, but it becomes a little bit harder when there's a student member. When this is for students and students in need. Um, and I think that this would be an awesome opportunity for SGA to be a leader on one of these issues and that we could really come together and um, construct this with the architect's office. Um, I know all the architects that I work over there, um, they'll love all of our help with this. I don't think Joanna wants to help us. Directors are awesome. Uh, going off of uh, what Director Bowling just said, uh, basically, uh, as chair of the Community Outreach Committee, I have multiple members who are already part of organizations of various colleges. Um, so if you want, we can definitely connect that to the meeting of the yeah. information. Um, that way, I'm able to outreach to everybody on campus um, through my committee. And there are most of them already members, and most of them are already students in various colleges. So that's easy to do the outreach. Oh, great. I appreciate that. And my cool. contact email is on that um, handout. So. So, any other questions? If you do, you can email Director Bowling and also Senator Spiridonova because this is also part of her Senate project as well, uh, the whole food pantry. So, if there's no other questions, thank you, uh, Mr. Bowling, for that. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to have the executive board update first from President Hassa and then Vice President Wong.
All right, uh, Vice President Kwong. Okay, so I want to clarify a couple things that Randy um, spoke on regarding the uh, internship that we spoke on uh, at the Faculty Senate. So, um, Trogo Zhu and Peter Vizkisens, um, you know, they agreed that the practice that's currently in place, um, it doesn't, it's not really logical, it doesn't make sense to have it. Um, and so what they're proposing is a, uh, a zero credit hour class that goes on your transcript, although it doesn't just mean it comes into fruition just because they said that. So what has to happen from there is each college uh, and each department has to submit a proposal to Faculty Senate. Um, and they're requesting that these um, proposals are submitted by uh, March. So it's important that we as a Senate, uh, we as a student government are putting pressure on our colleges to say, you know, what kind of proposal are you submitting? What's the idea? Like, are you going to institute a zero credit hour requirement? Uh, so we'll work with you. We'll be communicating about that so that we're, we're making sure that, that happens. Um, yeah, go ahead. I just want to add on that. Um, so I, with, when we talk to um, most programs and I do think that, you know, internships, if the programs are done properly, can be academic. You know, you learn so much when you're in a real-life setting. So part of my argument was, yes, they're offering a zero-credit option. However, I, uh, we are working to get a credit option also without having to pay for it. Um, they do do credit by, you know, testing out or credit by experience for some courses in this. I don't see why this is any different. That's why I refer to this as the co-op internship debacle at the Faculty Senate. They were confused as to why I called it that. But it, it is going to be a little bit of a fight, but I think that we can make it happen. I think you are learning a ton when you're in a role, you know, in co-op or internship. And then the, the, the current practice will still be in place, but they want to make sure that there's intervention, evaluation, assistance if you are having to pay that credit hour through your internship. So that there has to be some value added to the students if they're paying. Um, course registration, um, starting in the fall, for ne or next fall will be open a week earlier. Uh, it'll be, the classes will be able to be due February 12th, and then registration will begin on February 29th. Um, this uh, will allow students to have the opportunity to educate themselves on their courses to give them more time to uh, figure out their schedules. Uh, this will also uh, help, the, the idea is that it's going to help student return because the university and advisors will be able to target uh, students that have yet to register so they can intervene with uh, those students. Um, the president gave an update uh, regarding a couple things. The first thing I'd like to comment on is uh, the capital budget at the state level. So there is a committee that, uh, well it was believed that the capital budget was going to be delayed so significantly because uh, uh, President, or Governor Kasich is running for president, um, but they believe it's going to be rolled out in early April. Uh, so this is specific to capital that's allocated to college institutions. Uh, and the committee is comprised of four community colleges and four four-year colleges, that being Cincinnati, OU Miami, and Cleveland State. It's a $400 million budget, uh, and they, you know, we contribute those funds to things like the uh, new engineering school. Uh, so just to inform you guys about that. Um, across from the urban building, there is a planned demolition of the old Jewish Federation building. Uh, I believe they're going to start demolition on December 12th, and that will make way for uh, student housing. Uh, the proposed plan is to have 486 additional beds, uh, and the projected finish date is September 2017. You guys can inform your uh, constituents about that, get them excited. Uh, I'll give you a small update from UCC, University Curriculum Committee. Uh, the Faculty Center ratified a proposal for full implementation of the Arabic major. Um, it's been a long process to you know, get that through. And that happened, and there uh, was an update of admission standards for international students. Um, so this means making sure that English proficiency tests are up to par, and that, uh, you know, English composition and one English composition to the students that are taking those classes and are meeting uh, certain requirements. Yeah, they also switched a few, because I'm on the university committee, they switched a few things around. Uh, like, they took a few things out as well for them, because uh, some of the uh, requirements didn't make sense, because people that grew up speaking English didn't like, pass that big part, so they switched that as well. Thank you. Um, Director Klassen wants to give up here, and we'll give an update of OSGA. Director Bowen, did you have something for my special call? Um, yeah, just so everyone knows, so when I interned for Campus District Inc., that's the community development part for this area, um, they, the company is excited for the project, however, they're fairly an experienced developer group. Um, so although they say that 
keep that in mind. They are trying hard to do. Director Costa, you want to? Yeah. Well, or you can stay there. <laughs> okay. So, um, Vice President Kwan, Secretary Grudge, and I, um, in our absence on um, the Senate's uh, November 20th meeting, we are actually at OSGA representing CSU. Um, a lot of that we talked about had to do with the structure of OSGA. Um, a lot of people don't know, but OSGA is more of a, um, it's, it's in its, uh, I guess you could say, experimenting phases right now because um, other state um, university uh, coalitions, I guess you could say, are have far greater reach than Ohio does at this point. So we just talked about the effectiveness and we actually talked to an expert who studies that for um, most of his life, talking about uh, ways in which universities like us can get further outreach to you know the, the government and how our work can be heard. Um, so that was most of our meeting. Uh, the other parts of our meeting, we had presentations from um, officials from OSU talking about financial funding, um, financial aid, and sexual assault. They talked about uh, what's going on in their campus and what's going on statewide. Um, the other big thing that we did at the OSGA meeting was there's a state bill mandating, mandating that means for exit in houses in case of a fire. So um, basically it's talking about off-housing ca campus for like multiple residents. So um, basically this is people like us who you know, live with a bunch of people because we're in college. Um, and basically what happens sometimes is um, somebody will live in the attic of a house or something of that nature and they will not have a ladder. And if a fire ever breaks out or anything of that nature, <coughs> these people essentially die because there's no means for an exit. So this bill basically just means that there must be an exit um, for all those types of residents. And um, the only concern that some individuals had was that the price for the landlords and how that was going to affect them. But OSGA found that uh, there is no price on human life, obviously, and we also found that um, the price, the insurance life, uh, costs would actually go down, so landlords would pay less if they put that in, and then of course, if you know, worst case scenario happened, then the lawsuit would cost would definitely outweigh the cost for you know a small ladder. So these are in houses that are uh, above two stories as well, so it's not mandated mandated for one story houses. Um, so that's about it on our uh, OSGA excursion. So if you guys have any questions, please come to me. I'll be happy to answer them. I'd just like to add a couple more things. Um, the Ohio Collegiate Opportunity Cost, um, uh, 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 sorry, Opportunity Grant, otherwise known as OCOG, is essentially a statewide implementation of Pell Grants. Um, so that was cut by 66%. Um, that's what they reported to us from there, so I figured that would be something that you guys are interested in. Um, and then this was a report from Sherry Brown's office. Uh, there's a large push for internships because it's believed that students who are doing internships stay in those communities. Um, you know, the thing that we're experiencing in Ohio is a large brain gain. A lot of students come here to study in Ohio and they leave um, you know, to other states. And it seems like this is happening a lot in rural colleges, rural colleges, sorry, um, and not so much urban colleges. So I think that Clinton State is doing a good job of keeping our people here for people. Um, and then another thing that he pushed was Propel Ohio. Uh, it's a collegiate leadership summit. Um, very well attended last year. I think 60 uh, organizations were there. Uh, they had previous uh, governors, senators there. Uh, things that they discussed were youth, food security, human trafficking, mental health. Um, and they plan on hosting regional conferences. So I think that we have an opportunity to be involved with that. Um, Use our voices in that regard. Any questions for Senator C? Um, I just wanted to add for my vice president Juan's point that our what he talked about about Senator Brown. I can turn for his office, but you or anyone who know would be interested in him applying because he's an attorney in his office. Any uh, questions for Vice President Juan, Director Warren? How was Elkhart? Was it in the just the operation budget? I believe so, yeah. I think that what happened was there was <coughs> public institutions received a, a larger cut than private for profit institutions. They got a larger cut than they would have you know, past years. Well, and for OCOD, OCOD split directly in half. So, say the pot for OCOD is $100 million. 
here. So the, uh, the average OPOP last time I looked for a private institution is 2,000, as opposed to the public, which is around 1,000. But I didn't know it's kind of Any other comments or questions for Vice President Kwam? Any comments or questions for President Lassa from her update? For Director Kosick? Sounds good to me, otherwise I will do this. 
and uh, hopefully give everybody the best insight they've ever had about any religion. Um, so that concludes my update. Thanks.
she, I met with her and uh, two other uh, like professors who are working in conjunction with that program, and we, like, she asked me questions about, you know, what needs to improve in regard to, you know, the campus and being more accessible to students, and I had suggested that we improve Fortisane by possibly um, putting in some training days for these different organizations on campus, so I don't know if that could be something that would help you, Director Yasin. Um, also, I said, you know, she asked me a few questions in regard to what, what, you know, are issues that students are facing, and I brought up the issue of parking and what have you, so they wanted to have a meeting at some point, or come to speak in, in front of the Senate um, to discuss, you know, what students uh, need help with, and I said that really like communication, so at some point I think they want to have a meeting with us. But yeah, they just wanted to express, they, they really want to help improve the student body, so I think that we should all work towards helping them do that. Senator so, Barber? Just to kind of lay the more interesting uh, discussion to rest, we've been speaking like collectively, all of us, about how to reach out to organizations and figure out what their issues are and things like that. and. Uh, and then put on uh, educational maybe, uh, events to help them figure it out. So all these ideas that we're seeing right now, it's, that's stuff that's going on and stuff that uh, we've been discussing within like, the last four weeks. So. Again, uh, like Advisor Johnson said, uh, working with members of Student Life who are taking those initiatives is uh, going to be really important. So for those who uh, want to do that, do you have to Yeah, just to Senator uh, Sire's point. Um, so for stuff like specific issues like parking or whatever, I would recommend like having those students come and speak to the representatives on those committees just because the advocacy really, like the power that we have as, as this body, it really happens in those university committees. Um, and I do my best to let you guys know when those meetings are and I can send out like emails weeks prior as well. Um, but those issues, you know, are, are best brought up, you know, in, at that, in that forum as opposed to just this forum. Because we can sit here and talk about it all day, but, you know, if we're not talking about the administration, like it's really and Jerry, the leader, sorry. Um, I, I was talking about possibly putting, is there a way to like possibly put work stain onto our campus and having like a, a link? Yeah, I don't know that would be a good idea. On campus, not? Yeah, on campus, not. Yeah, on campus, not. Yeah, like just to put it on there so that when you do, when you're a freshman, you have that option and you know that there are different organizations out there, you can browse through it right. and yeah. become yeah. educated um, on that. That's really great, Dan. Yeah, I think we would have to talk to the registrar's office, but you and I can work on that. Oh, I just also wanted to mention, this is a separate topic, but uh, Senator uh, Spiridonova and I have actually come up with uh, another event to throw for, this is just for organizations. Um, we're looking to, she says that she had a uh, type of event um, for organizations that at four, five school prior to CSU, and it's, uh, I believe, a four appreciation day. Um, I don't know if we've had something like that. I, if we did, I haven't seen anything or heard anything about that. Um, does anybody know? We, no. The only thing really is we have like a, and Advisor Johnson, you can <clears throat> confirm, we have an organization banquet at the end of the year that kind of appreciates all of the organizations and departments on campus. But as far as a day, like a full day of stuff, I don't know. So. Um, so basically, I'm actually thinking of uh, implementing a type of event. Um, so if anybody wants to help out, you know, just to throw a little, you know, party, show organizations that. We're here for them to interact, help them out with any, you know, any situation, if it's finance or not. Um, so I think it'd be good to let them know. Um, in regards to like some of the, guys do, some of the issues you guys discussed, I um, advise that you guys go to the committees which are responsible for those things. Um, we have the USW United Student Organizations Committee who does all the student work stuff. I believe the student work are on. Yeah, so student organization centers are on that committee. Um, in any of the um, events um, concerning religion, we have the ad hoc multi day committee, and I think that anyone who wants to do those kinds of actions or programs should work through those committees. There's no reason to set up those committees if we just do everything ad hoc with different kinds of people doing different kinds of projects. Do we have anything else for Director Yasin? All right, if not, uh, we'll have a center report Senator Babiobe and myself. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, my project is basically designing the junior class senator. Um,
Um, we are responsible to take care of both of them. So, um, okay, so basically, um, I was trying to learn how things that I wanted to do, and um, I came up with the idea with working with um, Grand Express, Jury Audit, and Career Connections. And we met with um, Jennifer Stonekin, um, Stonekin, Stonekin, and Kevin Neal, and we also met with Karen Lees. And um, <clears throat> we met with them um, over the past week and last week just to like get information of what we can, like how much we can do for the students and things like that. Um, uh, basically, brief description is uh, we're working on resume building, uh, cover letters, mark interviews, and also like information with the degree audit. And so basically, what we're planning on doing is we're going to have we want the purpose of this is to have students understand the degree audit process and understand that they need to utilize that. Also, to bring more awareness to the Career Services Center that's in Rose Tower West. So basically, we're bringing them to us right here in the student center. What we want to do is we want to have four stations, resumes, cover letters, mock interviews, and um, the degree audit. Basically students would go, uh, swipe in, and then they would go to different stations. Each station would be about five to ten minutes. Career services and members from degree audit are planning on coming to this event to help facilitate it. Uh, we think this, it's a great idea, one all because we all need our cover letters, resumes, uh, looked at, mock interviews, a great degree on, it's great to look at. Also, it's February 18th, which is a week before the career fair. So basically, and then the Tuesday before the career fair, uh, there is a career fair like fashion show, like how to dress for success. Basically, a week and a half of preparation for the career fair. So, uh, Senator Babiota and I have been working diligently on this, and I don't know what's next. Oh, did I talk about Yeah, we were going about the process. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I kind of discussed about the process. Five to eight minutes, yes, of um, information from these members who are facilitating it. We're very glad that Karen Lee and her team are working with us and as long as Ms. Stone King and Ms. Mr. Neal on this. Uh, also, so what we're doing is we're going to have food at the event, uh, which we will figure out later on. But the purpose is to give our students a course. So what's going to happen is that with the four stations, students are going to be required to go to three stations to get food. So we'll have a system, whether it's a hole punching system uh, with each member, whether it's stamping uh, to make sure that there's proof, or we'll people that are working the food table just to make sure that there is uh, proof that they went to the station. Basically, we're just trying to get the students to go to each one so they are prepared. And we just don't want to get food to one because they'll go to one and then they'll get food. So this way we incentivize them to go through each one. The location will be in the student center from the common hours from 11 to 2. And of course, like you said, it's on February 18th, and it's on the third Thursday. Yeah. Might have to be fajitas. We want fajitas, but you know, we're going we're gonna to keep looking at the food outside. <laughs> we want something that's going to stick to the ribs, and fajitas is the best option, but again, we'll, with the food will come later. But we wanted to give basically the lowdown of the project. Uh, this and well, even though we do represent the junior senior class, this is not just for the juniors and seniors, but we are really encouraging all juniors and seniors to do this. So, um, Senator Babiota had a great idea asking Ms. Leesky if they had a well, had it, but about the database. So, they email all of the students, uh, every student at CSU, about uh, internships, you know, coming to career services. They agree to whatever flyer we make, whatever promotion item we make, they're going to send to all, I don't even know how many students. Over 17,000 students that we have here. It's in all. The same thing with uh, the people from Degree Audit. Theirs is a little uh, different, so they're going to try and focus on just a target of students. But either way, each student will get this somehow. Uh, and then we're going to promote heavy. Um, we're, we'll work with Director Jack Kabowski probably at the beginning of next semester to kind of work on some promotion items. And, oh, yeah, that's it. You want to talk? Yeah, and we love volunteers. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we'll have them sign it at the front, 
and then from there there'll just be a line of students that can go to each one. There'll be two stations on the left, two stations on the right. For those that are waiting, we will have chairs, but um, we are hope we are hoping that we have a lot of students. So hopefully there's some that are staying waiting to sit down and then waiting to go. Uh, and again, as Senator Bagheri said, we are looking for volunteers to kind of help facilitate that, making sure that things are running smooth, especially with the food. And if you help with the food and if you get tequitas, then you can get tequitas. <laughs> but yeah, basically that's yeah, kind of the lowdown of our project. So is there any questions for Senator Bagheri? <coughs> Senator C. What time is it? 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Okay. 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 Anything? Need the work experience. I know kids need internships, and a lot of students don't have to know the resources. 
that are out there that um, are providing internships. So just to give a brief overview, um, this event is going to be held in the spring. Um, like I said, it's going to be really big because we're not just doing by majors, but we're doing a big career fair for all um, students in the class, class of arts and science. So we wanted to be held in the spring, um, and we need a committee, a committee to be formed to lead the event. So not only um, Senator Jones and Senator Somi mm -hmm. um, will kind of be like the directors of this, but we need other representatives from either SGA and other organizations, um, particularly interested within. So, so basically, what we're going to do is instead of breaking it down, instead of just majors, because there's a lot in our class, um, we're going to try to get leaders, for say, of a group um, to connect better. So we're going to talk to 200 students. We can talk to one student. He can, he or she can talk to that group of people. Once we connect with all of those people, um, we're going to go from there. Um, we plan on having this, like she said, in the spring. Hopefully, the career fair. What did you say? It was like. February, February 20th. I was hoping around March. I, don't, I would not like to have it later because we're trying to get an internship. If we're focusing late, some people might not have, it, might not have those internships at that point. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to talk um, and we'll get this committee ready. If anybody would love to help with this career fair next semester, please talk to us. Um, I just want to say one, one thing really quick. A couple of weeks ago, um, Director Spengos and I met with Dr. Yarbo and we talked about internships. Kind of the, misrep not misrepresentation, but how some colleges, I guess, aren't uh, getting a lot of opportunity. Dr. Yarbo said that something that they're working on is kind of pinpointing certain colleges and departments that may not have these opportunities that are misrepresented. Uh, so that is something that Student Life is working on. So, and that is a conversation that myself and Director Spengros um, are familiar with from Dr. Yarbo. So, if you want to maybe talk to us about that as well, and because I know that they were trying to do like career fairs for like certain departments, colleges. So, that is definitely something we um, can discuss. Hey, Dr. Johnson, could you? Yeah, I just wanted to add, I know it's one of Dr. Yarbo and the Board of Trustees initiatives this year to really push career fairs, and they're actually charging. The Career Services Center with doing two career fairs next semester um, with various employers. So I just don't want to. I want to make sure that we're not oversaturating our employers, having them come to campus many different times. Um, when I know two are going to be planned next semester, so it might be a great initiative that we can join with the career fair, the Career Services Department. And yeah, I know you were saying oversaturating, but like when we were speaking here on. Um, that's one of the things you want to avoid because there is a high demand of jobs for particularly the STEM field. And the class, they really have like, I don't want to say you just have to have your, have your burden up. There's not a lot of opportunities, particularly for students in theater and the arts, where we go and look for internships. We just did, for instance, we were on the highways, we talked in arts. There were probably like 30 opportunities where if you talk with people from Miami, people in science, there's 50, 100 jobs. And so that's why we're, I don't want to say we're receiving negative feedback from faculty, but they're not really ready for this. And I think just the career fairs here at Atlanta has their own career fair, business has their own. They're never really been one for just class. And so we don't really want to, I don't want to say collaborate with other colleges, but we want this to be specifically for students of class. So my main goal after I did this event uh, about two Thursdays ago, I, my whole goal was to do an arts career fair, focus on straight arts, because we don't get much representation. Um, so that was my main goal. And then we met with Pamela, and um, she kind of opened our eyes more towards like a whole class. And then we talked about it, and it was such a good idea, and we can do so much with just class, um, and almost have sections that are for like the arts, um, you know, political sciences, criminology, sociology, things like that. Um, and you're right, we don't want to oversaturate, but also we do want to get the needs of our students. Um, I don't want to not. I don't, my, my issue was when we were talking to Pamela, she, she almost got straight and not like, was not focusing on the arts. That's my main goal, and that is going to be my main goal with this whole career fair, but I'm not also going to do that. That's all I want. But that is one of my main goals. Um, there's three things that I would like, if you guys would like. Um, she wrote down three places for internships, and it's great. Um, it's called the NEO Talent Exchange. 
Um, I think it's the Match.com one. Yeah. So the person who made Match.com, which is kind of funny, made another um, website for students for internships. And it's called the NEO Talent Exchange. Um, that's one of them. You would you have to do like make a profile such as like Match.com would, and then it'll pair you up with your you know internships or jobs that you would go for. Uh, but be careful, she said, because some person wanted to do this one major, but she said she was like kind of wanted to do marketing, but not really. And then but she kept getting hammered with emails about marketing, and she's like, well, I really don't want to do it. So make sure you're really precise on what you want. Um, oh, Ohio means um, internships.com. Um, Great website as well. Just type in your category. Um, you usually do look at the they still ask you for like um, miles. Try to be within 50 miles. They provide you more options. So that's another good resource. And then obviously Career Connection. Um, career Connection, the uh, Career Services um, has a bunch of outlets there that you can go to. Um, um, and just another, just a few other things to mention with our um, career that we tend to have. So like I said, it's going to be large. So. Um, we do our kind of, I think our biggest thing is going to have searching for a venue. Um, I know Pamela was talking about the students in their ballroom or the communications building, that big foyer down there. Those are one or two options. Also, Pamela works with um, grant initiatives. So they just, they're just working on receiving a um, money from a grant, which get yeah, 10 million, I think, which we're hoping go through because she will actually help fund us. So this is really big because not only will it fund us um, and also money from student government but the employers that come here to these um, career fairs, um, it's going to be good for them, but also good for the students in class. Uh, one more thing. Uh, when we talked to, when we talk with the dean, uh, we're trying to also implement a couple more majors because during this event that I had, um, some students have come up, coming up to me and they're not getting opportunities at all for some of what they're interested in. Um, this one girl really would love a music marketing major, which would deal with um, working with um, studios, uh, you know, obviously music and marketing. Some people, I had a question, well, why can't you do a major in um, music and marketing? Those are two completely separate things. Two completely separate things. So we're working on that. Also, graphic design um, was brought up. What was the word? Yeah, um, an Arabic uh, major. We'll be in the fall. So that's great. We found out the dean. Um, that's what happened. Um, Senator uh, I think that a specific college career fair is actually really, really, really beneficial. Um, I know the business does a specific college career fair, and it's awesome because when you go there, um, the employers are knowing, like, they know exactly what they're looking for. They put on there every student in the business building. Nobody has to waste any time. I don't have to waste my time coming up to somebody asking questions about this and that, and then being something I'm totally not looking for, and they don't have to waste their time talking to me. Um, that's something they're not looking for. So to have that pinpointed, knowing exactly um, what you're looking for, it gives you more opportunity to get engaged in the conversation very quickly and say like, well, this, you know, engage in it quicker rather than trying to beat around the bush and trying to figure out what you're both looking for. Um, so I think a, 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 a pinpointed one for the specific college is really going to be sure this year. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Good idea. Pamela talked about repetition, um, such as that, because there are a couple of employers that keep coming back to Cleveland State and literally take a, one student each semester and it keeps going like that and they keep you know, hiring them as interns and most likely getting the job. So we're trying to get repetition here, trying to get these employers to come here and at least take, I mean, I love one student, but we can get more. Each semester would be amazing, so that's what we're working on. Yeah, and just to add to that, and what, yeah, sorry, don't your last name. But um, like you said, business does have a career for every year. And another thing I really look for is sustainability. This is why we're stressing the committee. Um, we need you guys help, and we need help from other students you guys know within the student um, class that want to get involved in this. We don't want it to just be effective. We want it to sustain. Um, I'm a senior, and I know Keith is a freshman, so this will look good on his um, part because this is not just going to be a one-time thing. It's happen every year. So employees will keep coming back. They'll keep reimbursing us, and um, it will be effective, like I said, for not only them, but us, too. Um, I think so. Yeah. Student input is that the, the college career fair is really important, and career service maybe things something different, but I think the need to be coming together and explaining why those are important, and maybe think if Dr. Yarbrough needs to be there, because I mean, if this is his department and this is something that he believes, maybe they don't know that the college career fairs are really important, because after all, those are handled by the colleges, and career services, I don't think, have a lot of involvement in that. It's the career people in those specific colleges. And also, um, not to take this group, but 
we're going to be following the three for a personal rule when it comes to three men or um, just sort of as a man. And I do just want to say that these are conversations that uh, are in the process. So any questions you guys have, uh, myself, and then Mr. Rose, uh, Advisor Johnson, these are questions you guys can ask them. So there's no questions for Ben. Thank you guys for that update. Uh, we turn it over to our second.
SGA members can be voting on the committees. So some that were interested in other committees, and they were like the seventh person, they are the non-voting member. But we made sure to put those people on other committees, so they are voting members on at least one committee. Um, and I hope everybody knows that everybody is on the university committee now, so make sure you guys are going to all those meetings. They are very important, especially just so we can get our word out to um, the faculty and everybody. And those are like, very, very important. I stress that you guys go to those. Yeah, just another thing. Usually, SGA representatives are the only students on those committees. So those university committees, every committee you sit on is very important. University committees, very, very important. This is our chance to advocate to administration. So just like Secretary Grinch said, those are very important. So if you guys are getting emails from the chair people and about meeting times and you can't go to those because of class or something, that's fine. Just please inform Secretary Grinch about those because we really do not want you guys missing those. That's what I was say. Yeah, yeah. Speaking to President Lassa um, about it, um, in the past there have been problems with that in previous years, so we want to make sure that you are able to go. And if you can't go, that's totally fine. In your description, you are required to sit on university committees, so you guys are placed on one. So please make sure you are attending those. A lot of them require you to print the out, kind of make sure you're familiar with things. Uh, others are not. So again, any other questions, please uh, ask Secretary Grinch. Senator Sherman? Um, I just got one thing to say. Last year, um, I, was on, I was on a university committee, but Director Bowen was, and he couldn't make the meetings, and he asked if I could go. So even if you can't go to the meeting, I just ask the senator to go to your place and then inform you on the meeting. Um, and then they can go to the next one just so that we're not missing out soon at the meeting. So just maybe, you know, have a little bit of proxy there for you to um, inform you what happened at the meeting. But if you, if it's like a time where it's during class and you can't go to any meeting, then just inform Secretary Reg that way she can just take you off that committee and you don't have to keep asking people for that. President also. Also, when you're going to send a proxy like that, please notify the committee chair um, before the meeting. So if you're getting emails directly from them, you know, email them back and you know, I can't make it, but this person will go and serve as a proxy. And even if you're leaving yeah, early, make sure, even if you're leaving early, make sure you are uh, informing the chairperson that you're going to leave early or you're going to be a little bit late. Uh, so make sure you're in constant communication with them. And like the way that me and Senator Sully did last year, is I think by the end of it, the chair was putting both of us on the emails. And if I never said I wasn't going, I was assumed going. And if I had said something, both the end of the chair knew. And when Deanna showed up, no one was like shocked on why this person was there. So, I mean, it's always good kind of like for the tag team made that just because like they don't really consider student schedules when making these meetings um, because like in their head, nine to five is great um, regardless of who you are. Um, and so I think it's always good to have like, just someone else who you can easily email real quick, you know they'll respond, and you're pretty sure they can go because you guys have kind of and this also requires everyone to check their emails. <laughs> we all do that, so I don't have to remind anyone ever again. <laughs> um, also, because now we do have these three new committees, I want to know like who is interested in this, because sometimes emails just don't work because I don't want to go. Not getting on the committee, and then they're like, kind of irritated. So, um, can you just raise your hand, whoever wants to go on academic? Academic affairs, I know some of you, there's like four or five words, so can you please Raise your hand, Senator Towner, raise his hand, Senator Mavewe, Senator Najjar, Senator Fink. Anyone else? I don't know if I'm going to be inside or not, so I don't know. Yeah, no, 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 we're going to have to yeah. rearrange that. So just raise your hand regardless. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Senator Jimmer. Right, and then the student affairs one. Senator Sony. Anybody? You can put me in there. Senator C. Anybody else from the student affairs committee? Mm -hmm. Senator Jones. Mm -hmm. Yes, Senator Bobby. Um. So, since those of us, is it still like the same as, because I know they're at home. So the per the ad hoc an ad hoc committee is a trial committee that it, it, if it stays for two years after two years it becomes a permanent committee. The point of ad hoc is just for a trial committee. So multi faith uh, may or may not be there. So that's why after uh, two years, student affairs and academic affairs are trying to keep for two years. 
But yes, it does require, so ad hoc committees does count as your maximum of three committees. So again, Secretary Gretchen and SAB will meet to determine that. So is there anybody else who wants to be on student affairs? If not, okay, then the freshman council. Yeah. Uh, Senator Cardamone, Senator Kagan, uh, Senator Magnus, Senator Keating. Anybody else? Oh yeah, we'll gather the chairs over there. Anybody else? Freshman Leadership Council? Okay. You have anything else? Okay. So we can oh, Senator Keating. Uh, I have a quick question. I mentioned earlier that um, the there's uh, student org senators that are sitting on the USO. Is that a requirement for the position? I don't know. I think it's just encouraged uh, because since that is a big, I mean that's the whole point of USO. It's encouraged okay. for the student organization to be on that. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if it's technical. I'll just answer. Yeah. Okay. So they the same. Because it is not because the position description for all the senators is the same and because they're all the same, there's no listed of committees on which one is your first yeah. If not, um, so this was the main motion and segment committee, so is there any discussion on the set appointments? Any objection? Hearing none of the motion passed. Okay, last, uh, we'll call the INL Investigation Legislative Committee from the front so we can uh, have the INL update. Yeah. 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 Senate 
in regards to remove her from office. The Senate will occur at the meeting in which she does not inform the Senate for a second time. Secretary Gretchel submits Senate meeting minutes to all SGA members five days before the next Senate meeting as per her position description. Failure, failure to do so will result in a vote to remove her from office by secret ballot at the next possible Senate meeting. SADMUS, the Student Appointments Board, or SADMUS, compiled a list of all university committees and descriptions by March 4th. If this is not done, SAD members will have voting rights suspended for two months, and Secretary Gretsch will have a vote to be removed from office. Transition guides must be created for all student leadership scholarship recipients, and if this is not completed by the time that applications for SGA elections are open, the holder of the Student Leadership Scholarship will have a vote by secret ballot to be removed from office at the next possible Senate meeting. These are the endings of the investigation legislation uh, recommendations. I do want to comment on a couple things. One, uh, we took this time not to just, uh, there's a couple things that we kept in mind, but that this was not all Secretary Rich's fault. This was in fault of members of the SAB committee. So that was one thing that we wanted to make sure was aware to everybody. As well, we took this opportunity also to make sure that not only are one, is one certain member of the executive board held accountable, but all members of the share are accountable. So with the transition guides, what that is saying is all members who are holding SLS uh, scholarship positions, which means everybody but a senator, executive board, cabinet members, and the speaker, and director voting are going to write the transition guides for the next person, next student, who is holding that position. That is to be done uh, by the day that is set by the BOE of the um, uh, next election. If that is not done, then that is why the secret ballot will be for removal. Another thing is that this vote is for the recommendation of this. So, for instance, if Secretary Gretsch should not follow with, let's say, the sending of the meeting minutes after two times that is stated here, it goes to a vote to the Senate for uh, removal. It is not because we made the motion and second here and ratified it that after two times she's totally out. What it is saying is that the Senate has a vote by two thirds for removal of secret ballot. So that is something that I want to make sure is that yes. Uh, we are asking for a motion be, or for um, ratification of this, uh, but to keep those in mind. So I will take any questions, President Wallace. Um, the only issue that I have with this recommendation is the last requirement. That is not in Secretary Gertz's position description by any means. I do fully support transition guides to be created, but I think that we should work with student life on that, and I do recommend that that be removed from this. I'm, I'm going to comment on that. We are, and we spoke with Advisor Johnson on this, and we are all SLS positions are doing it. We are going to work with members of Student Life and Advisor Johnson on this. Uh, she was in total support of this to make sure not only are we held accountable with her position, but when new uh, students come in, uh, they aren't fully, they probably aren't fully aware of the position, and we want to make sure that everybody is. Um, and either way, just so you all know, I'm support in support of it, but I don't know if it, not seeing this, I don't know if it necessarily needs to be this document, because it's not just her job description, it's everybody's, and right now the INL investigation is just concerning Secretary. For the um, recommendation by the Senate and the Constitution, there is no specific to what a recommendation can make of. That is why there's nothing mentioned in SAB about SAB in the sendings of Secretary Gresh and INL, but SAB does have responsibilities in this recommendation. There's nothing in here, there's nothing in the Constitution that says that we can't expound upon the investigation. Again, uh, President Hoss and Advisor Johnson, we are taking this opportunity to make sure that everybody is accountable and also everyone is prepared for the position that are, they are getting into uh, Senator Malcolm. I also want to comment that part of that last recommendation stemmed from the fact that it wasn't just Secretary Gretsch who was being kept certain difficulties in here. It was difficulty stemming from a lot of people in SLS positions. This the point of these transition guides and requiring these transition guides to prevent situations like this from happening in the future. Which I think we can all agree would be maybe nice Senator King. Yeah, um, I have to agree with 
Senator, Senator President Alasa. Uh, I like the idea of creating transition guides. However, I believe there should be some that's added to either the Constitution or the bylaws, where in addition to it saying that with, ed with editing each year of final election, um, I don't see it as a need to add to the investigation legislation. Secretary, could you do this one? I just have a question about the first one. How am I supposed to do that in the end of the day? You give an update at every meeting. About what? Well, SAB is supposed to meet every month, and then also you are taking upon yourself your own initiatives. Uh, so, given a quick update is all that it is. Senator C. Um, I think you mentioned something about um, SAB possibly like being suspended if I mean under what circumstances would staff be suspended. It's uh they won't be suspended, the voting rights will be suspended. Under what circumstances? If um let me read it. It has to do with relation. Sorry, Dr. Um, it has to do with relation. Um, what we said is um, staff has compiled list of all university committees and descriptions by March 4th. So what we want done basically is for staff to basically create one paragraph descriptions which are available through student life, if you want to go to student life, for all the committee positions available. A lot of this stems from the fact that one of the many objections that were posed at last meeting were people who are more committees and didn't get to choose one. When they ask for committees in the future, when, he, when the secretary of the future emails students and asks for you to be put on certain committees, this position will be, the description will be available. And that should be, writing those descriptions should be staff's responsibility. Vice President Juan. Um, so, so first of all, uh, the Senate would ratify this, correct? Yes. That's does, the, does the Senate have this document? They don't, but they will in two seconds. Okay, okay. So you you if you plan to have, have on with them, then like reading the physical information, just going off of what Speaker All said. He read it better from you. Right. So I right. mean, does everyone feel like they're well educated on this? If not, then of, this is the point of you asking questions right now. There's a couple of yeah. right, there's a couple things I'd like to address. But first, I think it would be appropriate for everyone to be able to read this and go through it instead of us just having a conversation between you know whoever has a, a, a disagreement or whatever. Order. Can you go along and display it? Okay. Yeah, we can display it. Um, so the, I'd like to note the first thing. I like the idea of the transition guides. Um, I agree with um, Speaker or, or Senator Keating and President Palazzo. I'm not exactly sure what that would entail. Um, I've never had a transition guide, so it's, it's kind of confusing to me why you create a stipulation that you have someone removed for something uh, that we have no we don't have knowledge of how a transition guide will work. Um, if you'd like to comment on that. Yeah, transition guides are a fairly basic document that most students have. Mm -hmm. um, and by the end of this semester, I can send any, everyone a template of what I transition guide. And also working in conjunction with Student Life, and specifically uh, Advisor Johnson on that, uh, which means uh, Senator Cardone. Quick question. So are the transition guides intended to be updated following each, per, like each time someone takes a position? So every time they're done, they were updated? Or is this just a a uh, requirement for this year. Yeah. Um, it would be a requirement as if anything changed in the Constitution or Obstinating concerning that position. For the most part, all of our positions have stayed the same since their creation, and so there isn't a huge change to transition guys for the most part. Um, but if something's added in the Constitution, then clearly that will be changed in their transition guys. I think we all agree that transition guides are a good idea. However, in this recommendation, with you know putting some disposition as points for removal, I just don't see this the best fit. I just think we should have added the operations manual constitution. Creating transition guide is actually not stated in our position description. So, if, and if you do want to add something over the description, we already signed those. So, it would have to be towards the next semester. Yes, and the way to go about that would be to add a constitution on operations manual and change the position description in INL. Um, for this semester, for this scholarship, for the people in this office, it is you cannot do that. Uh, Senator Roll. I think a good alternative would be me requiring it and putting it in the constitution. Is your argument that it should be in the Constitution? It should be. 
but it should also be done now. And if we don't have it done now, then people next year can also potentially mess up. A big reason behind this was we've had problems in the past with uh, multiple SLS scholarship holders, and this is just a way to kind of end that uh, for new members who are coming in, who are holding a big responsibility, a big position, are getting paid for this position by student dollars to just make sure they are fully aware of what they are getting themselves into. Vice President Kwan. Uh, I wanted to note another thing that occurs on here, I think it's the second recommendation. Um, why does it come with the stipulation that uh, after the first infraction of the stipulation that they are moved? Whereas in the first one, there's a warning. There's like a, a warning if, you know, for the first stipulation and the second recommendation, there's no warning. Are you referring to the meeting minutes? It's, no, no, no. Yeah, the, the, yeah the, this is right. the meeting minutes, correct. Uh, because with the investigation and with just looking at emails, Secretary Gretsch has sent the has sent the meeting minutes either the night before or the day of Senate meetings um, for most of the Senate meetings, and that is going against your specific responsibility number one, which is to send the meeting minutes five days prior uh, before the next Senate meeting. Sure. And that's very important uh, because, as we see, when we get the meeting minutes late, uh, it's hard to make sure that we are going over the meeting minutes before those are ratified for public. Um, Sure. I mean, that's understandable, but I just think it's strange that you're creating all these stipulations that, you know, uh, obviously we need to approve and we need to do what's in our job descriptions, but we're not putting, you know, stipulations under any of those SLS that if they don't do something, that they're removed. Obviously, we want them to do their job. Um, you know, maybe a transition guy would have helped do their job in the first place, but if you're just putting a stipulation, you mess up one time, you're removed, you're removed from office without a vote, uh, you know, or with a vote. With a vote, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem fair to me unless you're making that applicable to you know across the board. Sure, I will comment on that. Secretary Gretsch, she is not um, required to give a secretary update, so that is why if she misses that, there's a warning because that's not in her description. Uh -huh. She is required to send the meeting minutes five days prior before the next Senate meeting. That is in her job description, specific responsibilities. Uh -huh. That has been um, messed up multiple times. So that is why, with that being in her specific responsibilities, after one time, and after uh, mentioning that, that is why we want to go to a vote of removal. Again, she is not required to give an update at the Senate meetings. This is just the, you know, for the Senate to see what she is doing and what is going on. Director Johnson. Yes, um, from my understanding, because I'm completely unaware of the situation until now, um, Secretary Gretsch is also a brand new secretary. I just want to throw that out there. But, if I can finish, um, from the finance being, from what I've seen since we're in our organization and also other organizations, new presidents are not familiar with a lot of their duties. And they've also, obviously, nobody's pointing fingers at them. They're new, they want to learn everything. So I understand that. I appreciate the work that you guys have done, but I just want to know. Because um, I'm obviously, I don't know, so I'm going to ask questions if that's okay. Um, but I'm curious as to, is this her first penalty and then it was brought to Angno? Or was there a prior incident and then you guys wanted to implement this type of, uh, this type of uh, situation? Secretary Gretsch has not followed specific responsibility number one of her job description of setting the meeting minutes five days prior before. Um, so that was more than once and she was sent to INL because she was not following her responsibilities in her job description. I have a question for Secretary Trex. Were you informed before, just like a first warning from anybody? Secretary Trex? No. Oh, this, oh. That's why I multiple times. Like, I just wanted to know. Wait, hold on, Secretary Gretsch, were you saying you were not informed at all before you were sent to INL that you had to send the meeting minutes five days prior to send the meeting? Yeah, that's easy. Uh, Sorry. I think Paul's asking a question. Secretary Gretsch. Um, because I did it multiple times. I wasn't doing that like intentionally. I would have thought that like our previous advisor would have been like, hey, this is meant to be done, like let me know. Like would have let me know about that, but that never happened. So that's why I kept happening. 
So, so the answer is no. Okay. Senator Carlo? And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but these are recommendations not to be concrete and for the rest of anyone else who takes this position. It's currently a recommendation for uh, this particular person, not to where everyone, if they don't do one thing, they're going to be removed from office. This is because this has been a, now, this is regardless of whether Secretary Gretsch is aware or not, but of uh, several accounts of not setting meeting minutes when, you know, at the appropriate time. That is why that's a recommendation. That it's not going to be something forever. It's not going to be put into the Constitution, I'm sure. Senator Stone? Um, just a couple of things. I, got, I need clarification on it. First of all, the one you said, um, Secretary Gregg, you said the IAL because of her position instructions. I didn't know that was the draft that was sent out. It was on grounds that she um, said something um, wrong. Um, that, that's why she was sent to IAL, not because she wasn't getting the duties of the um, secretary. Um, so I want clarification on that. And um, also, um, on the SAD um, part, the position descriptions, um, for, is that just for university committees or also just SGA committees as well? First of all, direct descriptions of SGA committees are already in the uh, office. Yes. Second question was about... Oh, the first one was about... First one. Uh, being sent to IAL. Oh, mm -hmm. as I said, there is nothing pertaining to how an investigation is um, created out. Um, again, after all this, IL is going to meet, um, and the Senate will be to approve how IL does the investigation because none is written down. Um, but in there, there is no um, denying or restricting the committee to not expand the investigation. As if someone is in charge of corruption or any other kind of thing when someone's charged. Any investigation is allowed to be further expanded upon prior to finding the criminal. More information in the investigation. That's and I do want to include that in those interviews, you were asked questions specifically to other things besides SAB, so you should have mentioned it there, I will say. And did, did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Senator Tenzio. Um, I would also like to remind that there are the two, that is a two thirds vote, so it is not like it, it's a majority. Or, oh, it's a majority. I thought you said it's a majority because. Just, it's a recommendation that two-thirds would be for any sort of removal or right. taking away. Well, yeah, that's what well, I mean, the, the, the removal. <laughs> yeah, removal of so the, the removal vote would be a two-thirds vote. Yes. Yeah. So it's not as if if an infringement happens, she's on that way out. It's like the Senate's discretion, which is what everything should be up to the Senate's discretion, to whether or not if there is a reason that infringements happen again, if there's a reason legitimate reason as to why things happen, that's to the Senate's discretion. That's why we have a Senate to see how things done and make those decisions. Going back to what the statement being included for was about whether or not Secretary Gretsch was given warning in regards to her meetings not being sent that time. Um, her President Halasa during the INL investigation, while she wasn't given warning, she was at least advised to submit her meeting minutes earlier than she had been submitted. Awesome. I would just like to say this organization is an opportunity for learning in all aspects, not just within the positions, but professional development as well. And I feel that Secretary Gretsch, she was appointed secretary three weeks into the semester. We our advisors switched, you know, two weeks after that. We had no formal SLS training and it didn't really we didn't really push for it because we were extremely busy. So I just feel like this is a very hefty consequence for, um, like this kind of stipulations are very hefty for the fact that she didn't even get any kind of formal training, which is not her fault at all. Um, so. Senator, um, I have a question regarding the staff um, thing. You said that um, it's both the secretary and uh, people on staff's like, fault. Why do you feel that the people on this the problem with the people on that? Senator Roll. So per the description that was being discussed here, mm -hmm. while Secretary Gretchen is the chair mm -hmm. of the committee, SAB is all voting members. And for it to come to an INL investigation based on an individual's issue with it, first of all, one third, about 30% of student government members were not on university committees. 
And that's not just something that fell on Secretary Gretchen's responsibility, but for all the senators that were on staff. That's something all staff members should notice. And that's the main reason why we include that content. Okay. But how is that our But you did have a proper roster because the SGA committees were correct, but not the university committees. But there's those, you said there were students who weren't on university. There were students who were not on university committees, but were on SGA committees. Okay. Senator C. No, but to go back to that point, that, that is true, but not all of them. We didn't have a proper roster. There were like four people missing before we had the meeting. So there were people missing when we came in. Uh, I don't want to make a motion. Uh, 
And that is correct. That is the reason. And I do agree with Senator Tendia. Uh, though I see um, things I agree with with the recommendation, I personally don't see a uh, proper alternative for the original <coughs> intent of why the investigation was made. Director Again, I am for the investigation. Um, I know you keep saying that the it's not in the Constitution, so I don't, I don't, you keep saying it almost to disparage Senator Tenzio's comments or Senator Tayo's comments. It's, it's like, not no, I mean, I, I understand, but uh, we, we understand it's not there in the Constitution, but we have the opportunity, they have the opportunity to send it to discuss. Well, we understand it, it says that in the Constitution, but, you know, the reason that we sent uh, Secretary Gresh I know was for a reason X, Y, and Z. So if, I All mean, those points are correct, and they're asking me why that was discussed in the investigation. Right. I'm explaining why that was discussed. Sure, I mean, no, they, I, they understand why, you know, you can bring it up through the Constitution. And now they're asking, how do they address it, you know? This, what, what would you do if you wanted to make an adaptation of something like this? What would we want to do? Yeah, explain. what's the process of, if there's a disagreement on this and you want to make an adaptation, is this a... Well, I don't know, because we thought we could edit stuff from SAB at a Senate meeting, but we can't. So, there's nothing written down that we Quick clarification on that, and then I want to switch back to Senator Mobian and Senator Sykes, please. Um, we can actually do that. However, like I mentioned in the beginning of this meeting, that one against process, we did have a committee meeting about the committee chair. I think it was just blatant lack of procedure and, and process in a lot of respect, uh, in my eyes. Also, back to your two points, um, everyone in this room, with the exception of myself and the rest of the executive board and the cabinet members, have voting rights. And it is not only your ability to speak up at, at committee meetings and at Senate meetings, but it's also your duty as student body representatives. So when you're sitting in a student appointments board committee meeting, in Secretary Gretchen's position description, she can sit there and say, you know what, these five people, they're going to be on all the committees. And if you don't speak up and say something, her recommendation is very clear. Just because it goes against, you know, something that's written in the operations manual and bylaws, it's your duty as a committee to say, no, I object, we're not doing this, we have to include these people, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I just, she is not fully responsible for what happened. We, I stated that, and that is why we have in there about the SAD members and their voting rights. Um, you guys said that four people were not on the roster. Who was not on the roster? Yeah, who was not on the roster? I understand. Okay. So I just remember that on the meeting, like on the day of the meeting, when we were given, when I believe it was Director Bowling pulled up the props, like the correct props, and we noticed, do you remember this meeting? We noticed there were, people, there were people missing from the roster in which we provide, that we worked on, there were people missing. So I, so, and that's why I, we had always discussed that at some point, there was some miscommunication. Sydney and I had discussed it in the Senate office, that there was possibly some miscommunication on the roster between you and Speaker All, or something because there were incoming senators. But when on the day of the meeting, November 20th, we did not have everybody on there, and that was not brought to our attention. So I don't know. I'm not sure which one I'm not looking at right now. And I have like the most recent senators on there. So I don't know if you guys have pulled up or anything, but. It's the roster they were speaking. Yeah, I don't know because like we had Karan, we had um, like McFink, like William Johnson, like those those members were like the newest members and they're on committees. Right? We should have like on the day of the meeting so, we, we, there were missing senators and I don't know. I don't I just don't know, know, know what's what coming from. I don't think that that's what I was trying to like we were trying to figure it out. Like Cindy and I were trying to figure it out. When we I know went back and found there were twelve or thirteen members who are not on university committees that were on SGA committees. We said nothing about them. Yeah, so everybody should have been on that. We didn't have an update the roster. That is not something I announced that. That is something that's yeah, absent. Let that be clear. Senator Wilson, are you, uh, as a committee, looking for some sort of vote from the Senate right now to... Well, I want to continue discussion, but eventually you would... Uh, Keep in mind the burden of, of the time being. Yeah, it is 5.30 and we do have half an hour. Uh, do, do you have anything else? No, that would be it. Director Johnson. Uh, I just have a question for all the senators. Uh, I'm confused right now. 
Does everybody, senators, know what's going on right now? Can you please, uh, can I get a raise of hands? Um, I'd also like to point out that you know, there's kind of a point that sad. I understand that things are getting very offensive, but there's there's really no punishment as of this recommendation. This recommendation, as of if it were to pass, is really no punishment as long as you do your job, which you are appointed to the position to do. So I understand that there's a defensive initiative, but there will be no problems and or consequences if your job is done the way it should be done within your job search. Senator Roth, I also want to give a point of verification as far as the level of like what sanctions can occur from INL, which is recommendations. Basically we've listed an alternative to this are basically suspension or removal from office. We did not think that was necessary because she was winning at least 95%, 90% of her job. So this is why we're recommending these particular sanctions rather than you know, <coughs> having her in this position is better than not having her in this position. Senator Carl? Yeah, just to uh, kind of look on top of Senator Mortendio's uh, statement, if all those who are in their positions feel that they are completely, like, to their own ability, able to fulfill those uh, requirements, uh, we shouldn't be upset about uh, punishments or uh, following that if we don't. So I don't understand why we should be so uh, defensive. Uh, Senator Dunn. I'd just like to sort of talk with your voice my dissatisfaction with the way this whole thing went down. I feel like uh, as a senator, I wasn't provided the information I needed at the get-go. I feel like, to some extent, I haven't heard anything uh, about what impact happened. Uh, I feel that I am not prepared to ratify this document that you can't even see all of it. And so I feel like I don't have the information now that I need. Uh, and I feel in general like the Senate is sort of being used not to its fullest potential because where there's clearly are sort of political elements going on, there's defensiveness, and I would like to see more emphasis on facts, what happened and what the moving forward is. I don't feel that this sort of conversation Productive for most of the city in this room. Senator Shea. Senator Shea Branch, can you speak on behalf of what a defense or anything on what happened? Because, I mean, clearly we understand about your position there was some discrepancies there, but can you address the falsification of information you provided to Senator Tony or to Senator Fabio? Can you speak on that now? Because I haven't. I just want to say that that's not even like a thing that we brought up that way. Right, like we're, we're addressing multiple issues right now. Is there, are we talking about secretary crash? Are we talking about You're out of order.
no athletes, no coaches, no one is on that committee. It's just the athletic director and then uh, very unbiased faculty members who don't really know exactly like the like main things about athletics. So it's just a very unbiased opinion that is going into that. That is all I said. We agreed on it, and then it got brought up in the meeting, and it was the way it was displayed to you guys. I feel it was not in the best way. Um, so it was a lot of miscommunication. Like I want you guys to realize that. That's about it. And that was brought up through IML, and we understood that that was a miscommunication because in SAB, we asked all four members if there are meeting minutes being taken. We got two different, or three different responses. We got two, two different responses. So clearly, SAB does not know who is taking meeting minutes, and that is an issue. And so we have understood that there is miscommunication in SAB. The, Athletics is miscommunication. We determine that it's miscommunication. However, like I said, we can further. I just want to say that, you know, there is no harsh punishment from a recommendation. Uh, I think I, I think I speak on behalf of INL, and I think this is just an opportunity for not only Secretary Gritch, but for all members of SGA just to have a little bit more transparency, uh, we're able to hold each other accountable. There's no, again, harsh recommendations, and you know, if, if no one can see this, then please speak up, but we've had PowerPoints and other presentations, and no one has said anything about that yet. So if anybody wants to say, if anyone wants to us to reread things, it's right here in the board meeting to zoom in, then please ask, because that is the point of what this is. Uh, Senator Sophie. I have a question. If um, with the recommendation list, is there any way we could make a change to the recommendation list? Uh, um, well, I think what happens is that the Senate, we would get a recommendation, the Senate votes on it, and if the Senate does not approve it, I think we can make recommendations. Senator, is it already done? So you're saying it's not, it'll go straight to a vote? Um, and then if we don't want to change it. And if we wanted to change something, like if we agree with some of it and not all of it, just like if it was finance and get sent back to the committee, uh, would it go that way? Or what route would it go? We can agree on a way that will happen, but if that's the way it'll happen, then we will <coughs> operate as policy as that because <coughs> but that is one reason why staff was taken down because the appointments of committees is set in the Constitution to be of the president or delegated to staff. It does not say and, it says or. The president has now delegated that ability to SAP. So that is why you edit it in SAP. And so if the ability to go back to the Senate is something we're going to do, then that is something we need to decide right now. I'd like to take that responsibility back and I'll be in this situation. I don't know if you can. We can just vote on that if you guys want. Vote on the disablement of SAP. Yeah. We're going to keep with the discussion. Well, if, okay. If anyone wants to do this. We're going to keep with the discussion of staff. And I also, sure. Senator Tenzio. I'd like to uh, also point out the fact that um, SAB has personally appointed um, three of the four members who are standing up there, um, personally appointed them in a meeting that they've had um, to trust their judgment when they were to do uh, investigations and stuff like this. Um, so it's not as though they're not among uh, a jury of uh, 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 people who are biased against them. It's people that they personally handpicked um, to view as the most best, like the best fit for situations like this. Verification: Two members sitting up here are appointed to SAP. I am on SAP for my position description. The speaker is on it. Yeah, I was excluding that speaker. I didn't know that you were. <coughs> it's on my. Vice President Kwan. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator first. Director Jakubowski is not standing up. Okay, Director Jakubowski. I guess I was just confused and could, could query you guys as to is there another way in which you could introduce some of the recommendations you're making here in terms of transition guide and things like that? Um, I like a lot of the results that INL has found in this situation. However, I feel that its inception was somewhat of a witch hunt. I could very much see myself up in this situation where I had not fulfilled a lot of the job requirements I was given purely because they're kind of hazy. 
there are a lot of things, especially in terms of chairing the committee, in terms of what Senator McCarthy has said, that I have not appropriately followed all of those rules. I'm curious as to just what our steps are going forward and whether or not this is even the best venue to do this. Again, uh, as I said, these are transition guides that we've worked on with members of the especially Advisor Johnson. And Advisor Johnson has also said that that was a great idea when I know that, that we would work in conjunction with members of Student Life to work on the transition guides. Because again, this is not a punishment, and this is not something just because of Secretary Chris, but this is moving forward a way for, again, we love transparency and accountability, so this is just another way for us to help with that. Senator Donovan? Uh, I would just like to say, first, it wasn't my objection to the plot size as it is right now, instead of only seeing two paragraphs in writing or three or half of oh. I would do you want love to see a copy of the full document. Oh. Right. Yeah. Secondly, well, also, I'm not saying all others that do this. There's one in my but also, I was just, I, I'm not you know, super familiar with this, I'm a recent senator, but it seems to me that the INL findings talk very little about Secretary Gretsch and what was actually found in the allegation against him. And it seems to me that this is a slightly different topic and one that we might not want to pursue it, but again, you know, Sen Senator Roth. Since this is the last meeting of the semester, I feel like we should clarify a lot of what Senator Downey is asking about. So, Secretary Gretsch was sent to INL based on information that was given in, in SAP that seemed to be um, miscommunication, apparently between her and the SAP members. Information that we concluded, some of it, while it was a poor recommendation, um, again, was miscommunication. We discussed the penalty as the, the minutes per information we found in the INL, basically stating that one member of the executive board said that, recommended that Secretary Gretchen sent her minutes earlier than she currently is, and what's involved with that. So we need the recommendation based on the um, based on these appointments, based on our findings that while Secretary Gretch is the chair of SAB, all members of SAB were at fault for the issues involving getting university. Side conversation needs to stop. Please pay attention or look at the recommendation, but please pay attention to what Senator Roth is saying. We basically concluded from that investigation because there was because again while Secretary Gretsch is the chair of that committee, as Speaker Hall pointed out before, and President Palazzo pointed out before, she can't vote on that committee. SAB is the one that approves of it, and SAB is also equally the responsible input for all the issues involved in the university and the SGA committees. We need the recommendation on the, um, uh, on the last one, sorry, the last one on the SLS scholarships, based on common general knowledge that lots of people, or at least a couple of people, besides Secretary Gretsch, in both in, in the executive board, do not understand their, their descriptions. So we figured this would be a better venue for making people understand their descriptions. And we need the first recommendation based on meeting minutes, you know, just to keep a tab, make sure everything's going okay with Secretary Gretsch. Uh, did that answer your question, Senator Down? Yes, thank you. Senator Stoneman. For the recommendation um, based on Secretary Gretsch, um, giving an update at every meeting, um, but that is not in her position description. I don't understand why that recommendation is in there. I think you, um, it should go back and be put in her position description if you want the secretary to give um, an update at every meeting. Other than that, I don't understand why she didn't. We don't want as for as for sad meets once a month or uh, as we meet at least once a month. Um, we have meetings at least twice a month. Um, so, so there might be a time where she doesn't have to, even if she's working on an initiative, um, she can give that update. So. Um, when she sees it due to her agenda request. But if you want her to give an, um, an update, um, she can just um, put that in her position description. We're not asking for the secretary position. We're asking for Secretary Gretsch to give an update. Really, I know does not see a problem with a five-minute update of just what's going on within SAB, within what she's doing, her responsibilities, you know, the initiatives she's taking. It, again, that's, I think some of you guys are making it to be a punishment. And it's just, again, you know, Number two of the Senate's uh, prior priorities of accountability, which again okay, should be for all uh, SGA members. Awesome. I would like to make a recommendation and also touch on just that aspect of, of your requiring her or encouraging her to do updates. I mean, that to me is like a direct mistrust in my appointment of Secretary Gretchen in the beginning. Like her position does not require that, and for you to try to do that, that's just a, like a 
mistrust in my appointment ability. Um, also, I'd like to just make a recommendation to avoid this entire thing and we can move forward with the transition guides as a Senate and maybe have this whole situation serve as a warning for Secretary Gresh in the future. Um, just the way that it was gone about the whole sending it to IML and she wasn't even there to speak for herself. The entire process was a little bit sketchy. I would just recommend that we avoid this entire recommendation, that we move forward with transition guys as a Senate, and have formal Senate and executive board and student government training together as a group, either something over break or very early spring semester. Uh, that's my recommendation. Thank you, Arvon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, This the first part of your conversation, and I'm sorry for that. I'm appalled at the way that you're conducting yourselves. There are concerns that may have very much legitimacy. You're students. You're here to learn. You're here to serve. If you have a problem with each other, I expect you to work it out. This whole wrangling and wrestling is nauseating to me. I, I see some of you saying, I don't understand why we're having this conversation, and yet you continue the conversation. You're talking about someone as if she's not in the room. I don't understand the very nature in which you're doing it. Do you have a right to do it? Absolutely. You're following the rules. Is it the right thing to do? Absolutely not. I encourage you to figure out the right thing to do. I move to table this recommendation to next semester. Uh, I move to send the motion. Yeah, the motion.
actually, you know what? I'm the one that made the motion. I was informed within the Senate meeting that Secretary Gretsch was to go just to receive information and investigate into why I believe it was informed in the Senate meeting that the, because I believe that falsified information was given. Um, and hearing the conversations today, I think that if I move to move it back to committee to look at the exact reason as to why she was sent and deal with that. Is there, there were some discussion, Senator Dar? Um, keeping in mind what Dr. Yarbrough said, um, we're all humans and we all make mistakes. I don't think it's necessary to um, to have to have this all going on. The, keeping in mind the fact that, you know, that Senator Gretsch never got like a stern warning. She, oh, she only got a, a, she was only advised to change her actions. You know, it's very easy to just tell a person, hey, you need to fix this, otherwise something bad will happen. And I don't think she was told that. I think she was told, hey, you should do this. She was never told anything official. And um, I think that we should, you know, be merciful here. And I think we should just table this completely. I think this is a waste of our time and our arguing. Like, I could, I could even, I can picture myself just talking to Senator Gretsch. It just takes only one person to say, hey, this is, this is about to happen. Like, easily avoidable, easily. You know, I don't think any of us want to, you know, do anything to hurt Senator Gretsch. You know, we, we can, we're all capable of making mistakes. If one of us was sent to INL, then I'm sure all, all many of us could find makes, like, the things that we're not doing correctly. So, all right. Senator Tendio, I'd like to call this to the vote, whether you're at the back line or not. Can we make a motion to either approve or deny so that we can clarify what yes or no? Motion Make a motion to either deny this or to approve this so that we can have a vote. And then that would clarify what a yes and what a no is. And that would be okay. Senator Tango? I move to deny the recommendation. Okay. Senator Garland? I second. Motion to force another recommendation from the INL committee. Is there any discussion on the matter? Any objection? Hearing none, the motion to pass. Okay, is there any other discussion on this? Dr. Yasum? Yeah, I just have a small comment. Um, I hope everybody's listening, everybody knows. We spend more time discussing something empty than actually discussing how we serve students. I hope everybody noticed that. Um, I just want everybody to know that. That's not why we're here. Going off of what Dr. Yarbo said, we're students first. So I'm pretty sure all of us were in class earlier today. And then we decided to come here because we're here as a team. So I really don't you know, appreciate you know, what Speaker Tundee said, this animosity. So I just want everybody to know that. Keep that in mind. Senator Walsh. I mean, to be able to serve as students, you should be expected to be able to do your role too. So. <clears throat> Senator Walsh. I want to say this um, because I was on the investigation legislation. We do think Secretary Walsh was doing her job. It might not have been all the duties responsible. The recommendations were based on this. Clearly, you guys did not think that these were appropriate. So, in the committee, we will go back, look to see what's potentially appropriate for future things here. But as regards to people doing their job, she's doing her job. We cannot rediscuss this unless someone wants to send it back. The objection was the recommendation was made, it was denied. She's been sent, it's been done. It can only, we can only do all this again if someone makes sense. Not making the emotional feel either way, just like. And also, I want to say anything about animosity because I personally have no feelings of animosity towards anyone. And as like a leader of, um, I know as a leader of the Senate, I personally discussed with Secretary Gresh many times. And me and Secretary Gresh came to a complete understanding on the whole process. Um, I don't know if that was directed towards me. Um, but I want to clarify that I am fine with Secretary Gretchen. I believe Secretary Gretchen is fine with me and that I have no personal
personal animosity towards anyone here. And I also want to say that it was for investigation purposes only. So for us as an IO committee to come up here and make a recommendation, that is it. It's a recommendation. We're not strongly urging anybody to reconsider her position. We're not disrespecting President Lhasa and her appointment. Feelings aside, they, they have to be personal in business. I just, I just want to clarify that out. Again, no one should have any personal problems with anybody here. At the end of the day, we're students. We're working towards one common goal, and that is to enhance the students here at CSU. I agree with President Lhasa when her and I spoke. Earlier is that this is this I I the IML investigations when it pertains to things like this are a waste of time compared to what we really should be doing. I know fully understands that. None of us can raise our hand here and say that we wanted to spend eight hours of investigation. We were here one night till 11 p.m. discussing all this. Again, we are here to serve the students. She was sent. We took protocol, and that and that was it. This is a recommendation that we brought up. This wasn't because we have any problems with anyone. <coughs> for, for the sake of time and respect, we, we have to make this decision. Can we move on? We already made a decision. We were right. just in brief discussion. We can still take a couple minutes if need be. If there's not any other discussion on this, everybody, thank you for a great semester on this. Anybody else you want to say? Yes, I just, I just want to say something. Just based off of the whole process and how everybody has been interacting as a whole, I think we're going into a break. I think you need to take this time to kind of examine your spot here as student government representatives. Look at your job description. Make sure you know the job that you are set forth to do because it's obvious that there are a few things in folks' job descriptions that maybe we don't know. If you have questions about your job description, that you're asking questions, you're coming to me as your new advisor to ask those questions so we can move forward. I look forward to working with you all next semester. And I think one big thing to start next semester off, we need to all come together as a group, as a student government, as a family that treats each other with respect, that moves forward with respect for one another, and is all on the same page. Because from the moment I stepped out to this, to, to, into your meetings, you all have not been on the same page. You have been, the nitpicking amongst each other has taken place a lot at meetings and we need to figure out a way to work as an organization and move forward. I might not always like everybody in my family, but at the end of the day, I love them. We need to treat them with respect. We need to see them at the Christmas holiday and have a smile on my face. And at the end of the day, they need to know that I do care about them and do respect them. So I challenge you as we go to the, the holiday break, to think about your job, think about your job description, and think about how student government as a whole can move forward for the betterment of our students and the betterment of our relationships with the whole. Thank you. Uh, really quick, Vice President Juan. Um, so, you know, I don't think that anything that happens with Malintent, honestly, I think that everyone here truly is dedicated to serving students. So please, moving forward, let's do that. We can work as a team. That's what we're here to do. I think it was just a difference on ideology or ideas, but we're, we're going to move together, okay? So on the lighter note, we want to celebrate um, um, our student government members that have, you know, accomplished a lot and they're moving on. So we have some boards that we want to hand out because people are graduating. Um, and so, you know, they're going to walk the stage looking fly with this bling bling right here. <laughs> um, so number one, uh, Senator Mohamed Taya, give him a round of applause.